year 2024 guys welcome back if you're newer or newish to the channel uh, i do this once a year every january 1st happy new year by the way happy 2024 um i'll make this sort of video every year uh, you can see i have a playlist on my channel for them i started back in 20 i did tier 2021 20, 22 23 so this will be my fourth year in a row doing this i'm actually kind of proud of myself for keeping up this tradition because it's honestly not an easy one uh and not for the reason that like i hit record and talk to the camera for 20 or 30 minutes um it's not easy for the reason that uh a sort of self-reflection is very hard to swallow sometimes especially when it's not all good and I think I, I watched, of course, last year's before uh, this one. I haven't watched the first two in a while, but I watched last year's to sort of compare. And it's very tough seeing um, things that you like ways that you felt about certain things and then realizing it either a didn't come to the fruition the way you thought it would or wanted it to and be sort of the optimism that you had about certain things that just didn't work out. Um, in terms of both life and content, I think uh, it, it's it's like that every year, right? There's things that you look forward to that don't end up happening, and the opposite, things you don't expect that happen that are awesome. You know what I mean? So um, I, know it's, I, I say it's difficult, but it's also kind of um, comforting knowing that the inevitabilities of life uh, are inevitable and that uh, you can't always control everything that's right in front of you. Um, so uh just that's sort of a preface to this yeah, i'm going to be talking about mostly just life stuff there's no uh crazy reaction today um but it's more just me talking about my current perspective on content life uh the direction of the channels and uh so on and so forth so if that's your cup of tea get your uh, literal cup of tea and we'll uh we'll talk about it a little bit um hopefully i won't ramble too much i do like i said i was watching last year's i rambled a lot in the intro uh we're already at uh, like two minutes here so i'm sorry um i don't have any q a questions from you guys i do apologize uh i meant to but at the time of recording this i'm a little late too and i don't want to have to uh wait for comments to roll in because i want to get this up for the new year so next year hold me to it i will do a, a sort of small q a section um so uh, first off, I usually like to recap, or not recap, but get a general idea of where we were, uh, last year in terms of the channels. In fact, I looked up the reaction channel, but for some reason, I, I didn't even check the main channel. Um, last year, for the reaction channel, at this time of the year, um, I, I was, in terms of One Piece, uh, we were headed to any Lobby. And I had finished recording in East Lobby about the time of this because I, I watched so far ahead. Now it's kind of the same case in terms of watching ahead because we're in Fishman Island and I am I have finished up Punk Hazard uh, recording. Like I'm about the same number of episodes ahead, I think. Like, I, I don't know if it's like 40 or 50 or 60. Um, just really far ahead just because of how much I genuinely enjoy one piece like it's actually taken over my life um so hang on let me I'll, i will cut this but i want to find out exactly where we were so one year ago today in terms of the non-reaction channel i was doing the hunter hunter game you never knew existed i was playing the cell arc in xenoverse 2 just a bunch of kind of random stuff on the channel i think i just started tenkaichi 3 which i haven't really continued all that much but you know and then again for the reaction channel uh, i was finishing up hunter hunter and whatnot so it's kind of crazy to see so about this time next year i imagine i'll be on like episode like 900 or so of one piece and then by the time we're at the next next it, can you believe in two years on dear 2020 five or no dear 2026 i'll be like guys isn't it crazy like we're caught up with one piece um i can't wait for that day to just like uh talk about all the current stuff with you guys um i also wanted to bring up in dear 2023 i said that crocodile was my favorite villain in one piece and at this point i just don't know anymore i really like blackbeard uh, i kind of see the navy like a kind in general is a really good villain crocodile is still pretty high up there doflamingo is really high up there i just like the further I get into One Piece, the more I realize how stacked the villains are. Um, so uh, another little section that I want to talk about is the goals that I lined up. Uh, I didn't really say many number goals, but I did say that I wanted to do 
365 videos like upload every single day on i shinobi or now jack the bus reacts um didn't make that for several reasons and i'll talk about them one um daily uploading uh whether it's reaction videos or not uh is a pretty hefty ask um especially running two channels um god bless lay uh shout out to lay lay knows how much he helps me he is uh virtually the full-time editor of the one piece reactions at this point and then i do all the other reactions and an, uh, like 70 percent of the stuff on jack the bus um but i i need you guys to drop a heart for lay because i don't genuinely think pumping out one piece reactions would be as fast without him because there is a lot of editing that goes into my reactions and if you want to see a video one day on the process of uh like my timeline of reactions let me know because i would love to lay it out for you guys and even those of you that want to start reaction channels of your own and i i would be more than happy to uh sort of give a general outline on how i do everything um so that being said 365 videos did not happen for that reason and for you know the dmca stuff that happened uh as many of you know uh the naruto series the naruto reaction series that was well over two or three years old um some of them were copyright struck this year and i spent a long time dealing with that it was one of the most stressful events of my life i still think i have remaining stress from that like i wake up thinking i should be like anxious about it um and then i have to reset and be like okay no no, no that's we're we're moving past that um but i think just the general anxiety of that still kind of remains and it will for a long time um but the naruto series gone on the channel but one thing that i uh kind of take solace in is knowing how much editing and how much transformation goes into the reactions today um how much i make them truly my own type of video um and as you guys know that sort of led into the rebrand of the channel from i shinobi to jack the bus reacts um that was a very very difficult decision i know in the video the rebranding video i kind of uh made it seem like uh i was like all in on it and i am still um but i don't think it really portrayed how difficult it was to make that change because i was very attached to the name i shinobi um and i did it for two reasons um one is just the general plan for the channel in the future I don't want to do just anime reactions forever. Um, I don't think I even want to do just reactions forever. Who knows, one day maybe Jack the Bus Reacts will be um, some other form or concept um, because it, everything's always sort of evolving with the YouTube channel. Um, so it was kind of that. Um, moving on from Naruto and stuff, as much of a place it holds in my heart, um, having two brands, Jack the Bus and I Shinobi, was... Not confusing for the average viewer, but for some, yes, it, having split brands and being sort of two different people on the internet, uh, I didn't love personally. Even if a lot of my audience didn't have a problem with it and understood that two channels existed, I didn't like having two brands. Um, not like being referred to as I Shinobi or Jack the Bus or one over the other, but um, I, I genuinely don't know if I can describe what it's like having those sort of like split, not personalities because I have the same personality, but split brands. Um, so I had to make the decision uh, to change one uh, for myself personally. And I like being Jack the Bus because it's who I actually am. Uh, just Jack, you know, um, as much as I loved the brand I Shinobi. And who knows, one day in the future, maybe I'll do something with the name I Shinobi, but I had to sort of lay the groundwork um, for the future, so. That was kind of the, my more specific thoughts behind the rebrand that I didn't really lay out in the rebrand video because um, it was more of just an announcement slash return video. So, um, yeah, uh, I think that that pretty much explains that sort of side of things. Um, I don't think I'll ever shoot for one video a day uh, the entire year unless I get like a full team where I'm not even worrying about half the stuff. But until then, uh, I will probably not make that promise again, but I am enjoying sort of the schedule that I have now, which is around four to five reactions a week. Uh, well, more like five to six reactions a week and then like three videos on Jack the Bus a week. Um, so it's a perfect segue. We'll talk about uh, my sort of current feelings on content in general. Um, 
still, if you guys can't tell, enjoying One Piece like it's nothing, man. For me to record that far ahead, I have to be like so absurdly addicted to the world that I'm watching that I, I, I genuinely can't explain it. It's why I'm able to binge One Piece so hard and Despite, yes, the pacing isn't the best, I get why there's so many episodes. I really do. On the Dragon Ball side of things, I think since finishing, I, I'm, of course, I'm still posting Dragon Ball Super Reactions here on this channel, but I have finished it, finished the recordings up. Uh, they're all on Patreon now, uh, including the reaction to Broly is on Patreon. But genuinely, and I even tweeted about this, since finishing Dragon Ball, I have fallen in love with the world of it even more in terms of the games. Xenoverse 2, fighters i have it's like amplified my enjoyment of those two games solely because i feel like i have more of an att attachment more of a, a care about the characters in the world in general following the end of it so it is actually affected jack the bus like recordings like i'm even more gung-ho about getting in xenoverse time or fighters time every day and getting to record and, and stuff like that and not to say it wasn't exciting before, but now it's like it's like amplified and I feel like I can enjoy that kind of stuff even more with you guys having the knowledge that I have and knowing that I can't wait even for like One Piece today that I'm current current or caught up and can talk about current stuff with you guys and play all the One Piece games. And I feel like it sort of just like cracks open this entire world that I'm limited to whenever I don't have the knowledge that I have. And now that I've finished Super, I sort of have a lot more knowledge. Um, so uh, I just wanted to say that's one of the things that I'm really the happiest about uh, right now in terms of content is just how much I, I enjoy what I'm watching slash reacting to and the effect that's having on videos. So yeah, just uh, very, very happy about that. So I wanted to get that settled because next part's a little bit heavier. I don't wanna dive too deep into it because I never want you guys to think that I'm just like coming on here to mope because that's not really what these videos are about. It's more about recognizing the good and the bad and what's next. You know what I mean? I think my biggest struggle right now in terms of like life as a whole is and this has always been how i've been is always struggling wanting to do more wanting to be more wanting to be somewhere else that i'm not and i'll, I'll currently I'll, I'll explain because currently it's that aspect for a lot of things um content how i'm spending time where i am stuff like that like i think the biggest example that sort of highlighted this to me was this summer i took a trip to spain and it was the furthest i've ever been away from home and i get very homesick very easily so getting to spain i got there and I just had this just like deep pit of despair in my stomach, like both being so far away from my usual stuff, uh, being away far so far away from home, a completely different place. I think it was the most, um, I would say, exaggerated that feeling in my chest has ever gotten. It's what I've always grappled with the most, but this year it's felt elevated but i don't think the whole dmca thing really helped you know what i mean um like that's kind of like stacked on top of it so i i know some of you might like out there might relate to it like always feeling like you should be doing something else you should be hanging out with someone else you should be spending your time differently um i don't know how to label that feeling um but it's a really bad feeling because it feels like you can never enjoy the moment enjoy what you have and enjoy who you're spending that time with even just you know sitting at, at your pc talking to a friend on discord like it, it feels like those are like sort of the types of things that you'll look back on that seems like little moments that end up being special in the future I, I don't want this to be like a cheesy quote but i was watching community actually if you've never seen it, it's a great sitcom the day i watched this episode i had been feeling this way very uh very particularly so whenever i i heard this it like it 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 hit pretty hard and i thought and like i said anybody else that feels this way or like deals with this kind of feeling um could possibly relate to but the first episode of season four a lot of the concept of it is the current group moving on with their lives like the group breaking up and stuff like that and that's kind of related to my problem is like change like having to deal with change and how scared that kind of 
makes me is of anything that changes, whether it's wherever I live, whoever I'm hanging out with, spending time with, being uh, away from family, stuff like that. Anything in my routine being different scares me. And it's like, I think more than the usual person. Um, and this episode was about change. It was about this group breaking up and Abed, uh, the, uh, one of the guys in the group of the study group uh is a lot like that like very scared of change wants them to all just be this study group forever and then this sitcom forever basically and it takes the course of the episode for him to realize that they have to slowly uh branch off to new paths and he says at the end of the episode i tried to hang on to this moment because i was so afraid of the future but then i realized all of this was once the future and was completely different from what i'd known before and I heard that and I was like, it's like, it seems like a little bit cheesy because it's like, yeah, of course, this this is the future. The past was the past, you know what I mean? But I think a lot about dealing with how I feel sometimes is putting things into perspective like that and realizing like, yeah, it's the things that you look forward to that you don't realize you're looking forward to them till either you're already there or it's past. So yeah, I think that applies to a lot of things in my life. Like whenever I first moved out of my parents' house, how scared I was until I realized how happy I am being in my own space. How scared I was to change the name of I Shinobi, knowing that was sort of my brand or my name for so long. And then realizing, yeah, maybe right now, I'm still not super comfortable having it be completely different but more comfortable than the day I changed it, of course. And just everything else in life, like just being afraid to make that jump, to make that change and realizing that you once were afraid to make these other changes, these other jumps in your life and how, where you are now, not everything may be peachy keen, but it's still these, these positive changes that you learn and grow from. So, um, I wanted to share that solely just to sort of explain myself. And like I said, if anybody out there can even remotely gain some uh, sort of comfort from that, then I've mission accomplished, man, honestly. It's just funny how in life, when you have the opportunity that I do to look back at literal years, like the beginning of years of my life and the perspective that I had uh, and seeing like, especially like last year's, how confident and comfortable I was in the decisions I was making and how I don't feel like I'm at that point right now. Uh, it's both comforting and scary because sometimes you just don't make it there. But knowing that there's that version of you out there, depending on what you're doing for yourself, what you're doing for others, uh, I think that's what draws the most comfort. So, like I said, it's like a double-edged sword that I record these every year because the years that aren't don't seem as bright as the years before only give you more reason to self-reflect and recognize what's different or um yeah how you're just looking at things in general so um sometimes you just you don't make it there and that's okay okay we gotta lay out some goals for 2024 i don't think new year's resolutions are typically necessary all that much because i think i think making a goal for the new year can be too daunting to some people so whenever you like make a resolution it's like okay it's it's all or nothing if i don't do this it's everything's over the world explodes but i think setting general goals or outlines for how you want to change things or be better is it's healthy you know it can't do it can't do any any bad you know what i mean so i tend to not set like hard set goals but instead recognize things that i want to change or be better about um so i wrote down personal goals and content goals personal goal wise I am on and off at the gym. Like uh, some weeks I'll I'll go consistently, others I won't. So I would like to stay more consistent with that as well as keeping my home and my setup more clean. I think whenever I get my whole house clean and my setup clean, I feel a hundred times better. But if I let one dish start in the sink, then it just piles up. If I l l throw one piece of a shirt on the floor, it just piles up. You know what I mean? It's like, you just have to stay on top of stuff like that. And then just in general, having more time for life by uh, time management, uh, working whenever I need to work and not whenever I don't need to. Um, content goal wise, uh, I generally just want to put out videos and streams that I'm proud of. Uh, more specifically, I also do want to do more IRL streams. If you didn't see, I've done, I did two this year. Uh, they were both very scuffed, very, very, very scuffed and ended with me running out of data because I still don't understand IRL streaming. Um, 
So I definitely want to do more of those. And uh, to tag on, I want to do more extras on the Patreon um, to support those of you guys that are on the Patreon that monetarily support me. Um, because uh, without the Patreon, I, I think I'd still be able to do YouTube relatively full time. But I, I think they the, the Patreon existing kind of gives me that blanket of security uh like find more financial security so i want to do more in terms of just like behind the scenes type stuff for that platform i even kind of want to bring up uh th at the time i'm recording this meat canyon just came out with a video um he's the guy that does like animations and stuff um talking about how he's taking like sort of a step back and like a break from uh, his usual animation stuff and um putting more time and love into things he genuinely is proud of and I watched that and I try to put myself like in his shoes and relate my content to his because I'm so different. Like I do gaming videos, do reaction videos, stuff like that. He does animations and then on his uh, a second channel, he does other stuff. I try to put myself in, in his shoes because I genuinely am very proud of the content I make now. Well, well, I feel like that forever about future content. No, because eventually I'll want to do other things or branch out and do other stuff. Um, and I try to remember that. And I try to keep myself sort of grounded and knowing that I don't always have to enjoy the content that I'm making because once that starts happening, that's when I need to pivot. That's when I need to change things to where I am still enjoying what I'm doing. Um, it's not a bad thing to feel burnt out and stuff like that. It's, it's just inevitable. Yeah, I think I felt a lot of uh, a lot of comfort in knowing that even people I look up to in terms of like really talented animators like him can feel burnt out with stuff that I find absolutely incredible and that it's just about doing what you enjoy and just giving it your best shot that to represent you because your content does represent you. So I, I don't know. I just wanted to bring that up because I found a lot of comfort in it and knowing uh, that, you know, everybody, everybody's dealing with the same type of stuff, man. Like you're, you're never truly alone in feeling left out or burdened or feeling like you're just not enough with that being said i want to talk about uh stuff that i sort of think you should look forward to it on both the channels and what i'm especially looking forward to um one piece one piece one piece i just i can't exaggerate enough how much i'm still enjoying this this show and just the the world in general um dragon ball gaming and show content since we are finishing up super it kind of just explodes the opportunities for the non-reaction channel um in terms of things that i can do gaming videos game show videos just everything dragon ball content xenoverse fighters tenkaichi everything and even sparking zero which is hopefully coming out in 2024 Hopefully I'm not making Deer 2025 going, please release Sparking Zero. Um, <laughs> but yeah, and then uh, just branching out more. I think last year, I don't think I mentioned it actually in Deer 2024, but I said I want to do more collabs. And I think I branched out a little bit this year in terms of collabs, but I want to even more. Um, it's funny, if you're not a content creator, uh, you can still relate to this branching out to other creator reaching out to other creators and going like hey do you want to record this video is a lot like being in grade school or like even in the office at work like trying to make a friend basically um except it's it's just over the internet uh so i don't know if that makes it easier or harder but it, it's literally that exact same feeling like i feel anxious shy DMing other creators going, hey, you want to you wanna make a video together about Dragon Ball? <laughs> so um, definitely want to do that more. Uh, it's out of my comfort zone, but that's the best place to be. Um, so and then just more on the reaction channel. That's why I changed the name. It's uh, the bigger vision that I have for it uh, that I always want to just keep expanding on. So, um, that about wraps up what I wanted to talk about. Uh, I hope I didn't get too personal, but again, I always want to, um, be a little bit vulnerable in these because I know hearing it from others, whenever you're experiencing the same feeling can be a very comforting feeling. So, uh, if any of you have that uh, same, um, sort of, um, feeling on the day to day, uh, just know it's normal, man. It's just how it is. Uh, and it's something that I grapple with and I will continue to, I'm assuming for my life. It's just about, uh, like I said, keeping things in perspective. So, um, I hope you have a happy new year. I hope you're, uh, not watching this hungover on new year's day. I hope you're having a nice 
fresh start to the year get that glass of orange juice yeah hopefully this time next year in deer 2025 i will have a fresh new update for you guys and we will uh we will circle back to uh how everything is but uh thank you for being here thank you for joining me and uh here's to the new year peace guys